semiconductor devices okay next is about wafer processing okay so this is the complete diagram of a soralsky method okay soralsky process for manufacturing the silicon ingots okay so this diagram uh, they might be asking this you should be making a note of it so here what they have done is uh, the amount of silicon is uh, stored inside here and th this is the direction of pull that is the amount of silicon to be released that is kept under the wafer okay this wafer indicates that the uh, silicon uh, push okay that is a uh, uh, it uh, controls the amount of silicon present inside the ingot okay so this is the graphite liner graphite liner means uh, it gives the outline to the silicon okay so this is the outer shield this is the molten silicon here okay this part then this is the silicon seed this is the growing crystal and this is the crystal holder the, the crystal holder is uh, it stores the crystals which is uh, grown from the silicon and this is the outer part is the heater part okay first is the starting material wafers are sliced from single crystal silicon ingots using the so, soralsky method okay wafer sizes are uh, normally from 75 to 150 millimeter in diameter and it is was less than 1 millimeter thick okay the so, the normal size of a wafer is uh, as mentioned here next is soralsky method that is used for the crystal growth okay a seed crystal is dipped into molten polycrystalline silicon the seed is slowly pulled and rotated to grow a single crystal ingot Controlled impurity doping is done during this stage. Okay. Next is wafer slicing and polishing. Diamond blades are used to slice the ingot into thin wafers. Okay. So in order to uh, do the uh, to do the slicing of ingot into thin wafers, the since this is the wafer processing, wafer manufacturing. So here, uh, diamond blades are used in order to slice them out. Okay. At least one side is polished to make a mirror-like finish. So in this way the wafer manufacturing is done next is about oxidation importance of silicon dioxide silicon dioxide is widely used in ic fabrication as an insulator and a barrier types of oxidation there are mainly two types one is wet oxidation and dry oxidation in wet oxidation it uses water vapor at uh, the temperature around 900 to 1000 degrees celsius which is a fast process whereas in dry oxidation it uses pure oxygen Okay, it, uh, it is approximately ranging in the range of 1200 degrees Celsius, slower but the results in better quality oxide. Okay, so here in case of uh, the fa fabrication process, we often go with the dry oxidation because uh, uh, the temperature would be high and uh, since the process is slow but the results, uh, we need a better quality of oxide. So that's why we prefer for dry oxidation. Okay, oxide growth. SiO2 grows both into and above the silicon surface. Since this silicon dioxide takes up more space than the origin silicon, the oxide layer bulges up. Okay. So this is the simple diagram of a field oxide layer with the, some polysilicon material in it. Okay. You can note it down. Next is about selective diffusion and all. So this is like, so now let us discuss with the concept of selective diffusion. Okay. So the under the selective diffusion here the silicon wafer would be having the under fabrication we have discussed the different steps under that the silicon wafer would be having one separate layer that is the one micrometer layer who would be giving the attachment under the substrate right so this is with respect to the silicon dioxide but the selective diffusion would be varying the uh, this one micrometer length with respect to the uh, photoresistive material provided to the silicon dioxide upper upper layer okay so the n type and p type substrate for both for both the substrate it would be varying with different positions so that's why the selective diffusion would be keeping a balance between the range of silicon dioxide used in a wafer with respect to the photoresistive material okay so let, this was all about the brief summary about the selective diffusion why it is needed it is needed to form regions with specific electrical properties that is the properties would be of n type or of p type so it would be dependent on the material which you are using uh, which we, which would be the uh, uh, n type substrate or p type substrate if it is n type substrate the electrical properties would be varying with respect to the uh, charge carriers whether it is majority or minority it is dependent on the material okay next role of the silicon dioxide under this uh, silicon wafer it acts as a mask or barrier against the unwanted doping so the masking uh, technique 
would be very very essential under this uh, SiO2 for the selective diffusion. Why? Because the masking would be helping to uh, the diffusion uh, layer which is formed in the silicon wafer. The due to that masking, it would be uh, getting balanced. Okay. The barrier, the barrier is again the photoresistive material. Okay. And against the unwanted doping. So unwanted doping is the extra necessary doping required for the silicon wafer to be acting as a complete in silicon. Okay. So that's why this unwanted doping would be removed. Process steps. So these are the steps for the selective diffusion. So first step is grow the SiO2 layer on the over the wafer. Okay. So as you see here, so this is the silicon wafer. Here we have this SiO2 layer. Okay. So this is the SiO2 layer. Okay. Over the wafer they have kept it. Then apply the photoresist that is PR to a UV sensitive material. So just above that silicon uh, photoresistive material in the silicon wafer. So uh, uh, SiO2 layer we have one photoresist. Okay. So this is that photoresist in the cross lines. They have mentioned it. Then use the UV light through a mask to define the pattern areas. So here you see here just above that they have uh, kept one glass mask. So just above the glass mask they are, they are passing the ultraviolet rays that is the ultraviolet light is uh, passed uh, pass through this mask. So some some part of the mask would be uh, they, uh, it would be absorbing but some other part of the UV light would be getting reflected back. Okay. So which part which is uh, blocked inside this glass mask that would be kept uh, under the mask pattern and that would be getting uh, placed under the photoresistive material so that the uh, patterning would be taking place in the SiO2 layer. Okay. So this is the third step. Then fourth step is etch SiO2 in the exposed areas. So now next is etching, etching you should be taking. So wherever the areas are exposed, you see here, this is the exposed area of the reflection of light. Okay. Using that, you should be just uh, bringing it uh, uh, closer to the photoresistive material. Then the etching would be taking place in that particular area. That is the, this area would be getting etched. Okay. Next introduce the dopants exposed in dopants in exposed silicon via diffusion or ion implantation. Okay. Either diffusion process or ion implantation it is one and the same in that etched area you should be doing it okay so this was all about the selective diffusion uh, process steps and uh, with each diagram it is mentioned so if you write these things uh, for for that exam easily you could be scoring marks okay so yeah so please note this down